Hey climbing fans, today I'm going to go over a few resources that you need to know about if you want to watch climbing world cups like a pro. New viewers usually don't know where to find this information and frankly a lot of experienced comp watchers don't know about these things either and I promise they're going to make your viewing experience easier and more fun because you'll actually know more about what's happening. If any of these tips help you make sure to share them with your friends and if you have your own suggestions on how to watch climbing comps leave them in the comments. All of these tips are focused on getting you information that isn't shown or isn't shown often enough on the broadcast itself. So if you've ever wondered what the current score is or why someone qualified with fewer tops than someone else or if you want to know who's attending a world cup or who set these problems i'm going to show you where to find that info so first things first i'm going to assume you live in a country lucky enough to be able to watch ifsc events on youtube search ifsc climbing and you should find replays of old events and scheduled live streams for the events to come if YouTube doesn't let you watch these videos because of your location, that means the broadcast rights in your country have been sold to a local broadcaster. In that case, you might be able to watch the event live, maybe for free on TV or on the broadcaster's website, but sometimes there is a paywall or worse, there's no live feed at all. In that case, you'll have to see if there's a way where you can watch Canadian YouTube on your computer somehow. You can figure that out for yourself. Anyway, now that you found the stream, let's get into it. The IFSC's website is full of information, but be warned, it feels like it's designed to keep you from ever finding what you are looking for. Here we are at ifsc-climbing.org, and let's start with the basics. Where can I find results from past events or live results for an event happening right now? Well, if we go to competitions maybe, and maybe results, if you guessed results, you would be wrong. This seems to be a vestigial page uh, used to print out final results for finished events, and maybe it's still used by IFSC officials. Uh, but if you want real live results, we are actually going to go somewhere else. This page isn't that great for us. We're going to go to competitions, and instead we're going to go to calendar. The calendar is where you can find a list of past events and upcoming events sorted by not just the year, but also the tier and the region. To view results, you're going to scroll to the event that you're looking for and then click which gender discipline you're interested in. So we'll go to the Salt Lake City event that happened recently. We'll go to Boulder Women. We'll just click on this. At first glance, this looks exactly the same as the crappy results page we looked at earlier, but the magic is in these top little links up here. This is where you can sort uh, to see the uh, scores by individual rounds. So clicking on these will display both the summative score uh, for that specific round. So five tops and five zones in six attempts uh, and, uh, and five attempts respectively. Uh, but it also shows this graphical breakdown of uh, problem by problem scores. And these results update live. So even if the score box isn't shown on the broadcast, you can find it on the website. Now, one disappointing omission, I'll see if I can find, uh, I will have to go back to the calendar. So one omission, if we go to Boulder Men from uh, this week's uh, Innsbruck Bouldering World Cup, is that uh, when it comes to qualifiers, if there are 60 or more competitors in a single gender, then that field is split into two different starting groups who will both climb at the same time, but on different sets of boulders. Now, when the field is split into two starting groups, the top 10 from each group move on to semifinals. But because they uh, don't climb the same boulders, their nominal scores can be very different. So for example, let's look here on this page. We have two climbers here tied for first, Jakob Schubert and Yoshiyuki Ogata. But if we go over to their actual score from the qualification round, you'll see that their scores are entirely different and Yoshiyuki has a much higher score than Jakob did. That's because they uh, were climbing in opposite starting groups and were climbing different boulders. They both came out first from their own respective starting group and are therefore ranked first, even though they have different scores. So in this event, these guys were both top of their uh, uh, different starting groups. These guys both technically came second and it's being staggered in a really annoying way because you're alternating back and forth between the two starting groups. So in this case, we take the top 10 athletes from each event, which unfortunately corresponds to the top 20. And that means we're going all the way to the two 19th climbers. So in this case, everyone up to 
Alex Magos will continue on to semifinals at this particular event. So that's a really annoying omission that you can't actually see who's in what group. It would be especially helpful like in semifinals and finals when that info starts to get clouded, but that's something that is missing for now. Um, now, while we're, uh, while we're talking about scoring, let's talk about other details we can learn about the competition. Let's say there's an event uh, coming up some uh, coming weekend and we want to decide if i'm gonna watch it or not because maybe i have other plans so uh maybe you'd like to know when a round starts or who's climbing or maybe who the root setters are because if you know those things and if it fits your schedule you might want to make yourself uh, actually watch it so when we're back on the calendar page here's one thing to check out is this registrations page all right showing you a list of all the athletes who are supposed to attend this event, sorted by gender and by discipline, and then by their country going down the left-hand side. Athletes can register up to 15 days, uh, or up until 15 days before the comp. So give it a look, but take it with a grain of salt. Athletes sometimes pull out of events due to injuries, visa issues, or lately COVID regulations. If you're a real nerd, you can actually go back and also see who the uh, team officials are. Um, now you'll see some countries are sending a full staff of coaches and managers and medical staff, whereas some other countries can't afford any of that and instead just register the mom or the dad of an athlete as a coach to fulfill the event requirements. Now the other useful uh, part of the calendar page is this, the info sheet for each event. Now, while most of this info is irrelevant to spectators, it does include some gems. So we'll open up this page. And the big ones that I wanted to point out are, first of all, who the IFSC setters are for the event. So under the officials uh, heading right here, it shows us the names and the countries of the IFSC root setters. Now, keep in mind that these are just the root setters that are being paid by the IFSC. The local event organizer and the national federation usually collaborate to assign further assistant setters to the crew. And these are usually local root setters trying to work their way up the ladder. Now, the info sheet also includes a full schedule for the event from everything to uh, from when climbing starts, but also when isolation closes and opens and when the technical briefings are. Uh, so that'll give you more information. And especially for me, when you're watching some of these events that are taking place on a different continent, having this info sheet weeks in advance of the competition lets me adjust my sleep schedule. So I know, you know, if I have to be awake at 4 a.m. for a comp, I've got, you know, a week or two to start to adjust to that kind of schedule. So that is the magic of the calendar page, which is far more useful than the results page ever has been. Now let's talk about rankings. This website includes two different rankings. The least uh, interesting one for now is the world ranking. Now this could be a really useful tool, but to this date we have no way to track it historically over time. So its only real purpose is to seed climbers for the qualification rounds of events. So I'm gonna ignore this for now. But up here, more interesting are the World Cup rankings for each season. This is an annual accumulation of points from each World Cup event to determine who wins the overall season World Cup. Now, once you get into the final two or three events of the season, this gets really interesting to track. Those final two events are what make or break a climber in winning the season overall. And often that last event of the year is more exciting to watch just for these points rather than uh, who claims the gold for that single event. So if we choose the uh, Boulder women here, it brings up the current uh, standings. Now, instead of just looking at the summary page, which of course shows the athletes and the number of points that they've accumulated so far this year, instead of just looking at this, we're gonna keep scrolling down and I don't know why the IFSC use, uses frames still, just like a waste of everything. Why have two scroll bars? That's totally pointless. This is the link we're looking for right here, calculation of this ranking. When we click on this, this page shows us how many points each athlete has earned at each event, all right? Uh, and helps calculate their final score. Now, remember for these World Cup rankings, an athlete's final score for the season is made up of their best five events. So anyone who climbs at all six events can drop their worst score. So anyway, this is a lot of fun to watch, especially towards the end of the season. Right now, Natalia Grossman is leading the pack with 265. And as we go into those last couple World Cups, this race is, is gonna shed off some of these lower contenders and it's gonna come down to probably the top 
three or four climbers, depending on how they do in the next couple of events. Now, you might be wondering, well, how do I know how many points you get for uh, each World Cup? Well, that's a great reason to check out the last point on our website, uh, which is the rule book, which sounds super boring. But if we go to competitions and then rules, we are going to find the most recent edition of the 2021 rule book. This is an addendum. This is an addendum. This is the most recent edition. We're going to pop this open. Now, the rule book is great reading if you're a diehard comp watcher, uh, but it includes just a couple other important resources that you might be interested in, in knowing about, including a table of the World Cup ranking points. So we'll just go to the table of contents and down here, one of the annexes is the World Cup ranking points. And here's your table. It shows you that when you get first place in a World Cup, you earn 100 points towards that season ranking. Second is 80, third is 65, and so on, all the way down to 40th place, earning a juicy 0.5 ranking points. Uh, so anyway, there's all the info you need. And of course, the rule book is just chock full of so much other fun stuff. It's recently been reformatted and rewritten, so it's much shorter than it used to be. And it's actually pretty easy to navigate nowadays. So make sure you give that a look if you're if you're one of those nerds. All right. Now, the final tip is to download the IFSC's app. Uh, let's see if I can pull it up here. So this is available on the App Store and on Google Play titled World Cup Series. The app isn't perfect, but it gives you, uh, you know, live scoring in your hand and also gives you access to the current world ranking and World Cup ranking in the very top right hand corner of the app. Plus, if you want to track specific athletes, you can star them and condense the list for a quick view of the climbers that you care about. So, for example, if, you know, there's been an American World Cup and there's a ton of U.S. climbers, you can star those U.S. climbers and then condense the list so that you can just track those people that you're really interested in. All right. So now you know how to watch World Cups the way I do with all the info that should be on your screen in the broadcast, but for now isn't. Now you know exactly what athletes will need on their final climb to secure the win. You'll know who set the problems and when the next round starts and who's in the running to win the coveted overall World Cup season. So this is how you watch World Cups like a pro. If you enjoyed this, leave a like and subscribe. And thanks to my patrons uh, and to my friends in the Plastic Weekly Discord, as always, for inspiring this video. Enjoy the World Cups this season and I'll see you in the next one.